welcome to the project, everyone. We are back on the Pinewood Derby timer. Woo-wee. Finally got my first car fixed, all four tires. So race day is quickly coming upon us and uh, we have a lot of work to do. So today's project is gonna be a lot. But as you probably saw from the intro, like we've pretty much vetted out every single part of the project. Now it's actually putting it together and making it a working system. So first we have a bunch of resistors. We have a bunch of these displays and we have the new shift registers that uh, we know work for these big old displays. So I think the first order of business is to actually go ahead and build up these displays. And I think the way I'm going to be doing it is basically something just like this right here where uh, we have the proto board on the back and then we have the dip package right here. And then I'm just gonna like solder it to there. And then from there, I guess we'll figure out how we can like do these back to back so we can do a display on either side. But first let's get to soldering these up. Let's get to it. halfway through building up these displays as you can see here so I thought I'd stop right here I mean that was a long time lapse but we're halfway through we got the chips on there and I kind of used like both sides so you can see I have the grounds tied together there and then on the front I just did like a method of using solid core wire and then tying it down in between because you can't like get soldered a bridge here but pretty simple we just have uh so on this side we have our clock and then we have ground and then we have 12 volts and then the what is that output enable the data and then this is vdd or power for the shift register and as you might notice we have two different versions 
So this one, it's because these pins on the bottom are actually flopped. So this is a uh, is our clock, that's ground, that's 12 volts, that's output enable, VD, uh, data, and VDD. And the reason is I wanna be able to put them like this, and so like the chips are offset like that if I wanna go really close. But the bigger thing is that the, uh, the pins on the bottom, because the pins will line up, so that way when they're back to back like this, it'll be, you know, uh, clock, ground 12 volts this perfect little space here for the pins from the uh from the screens and that kind of thing so yeah so i should be able to put them back to back and then just tie them over like that that's why we have two different versions that way we can put them on the finish line over there and have one facing that way and one facing the other way and as you might notice we are missing one because i did finish building up one. Uh, just because I want to make sure I didn't totally screw up these connections and that it still works like I think it should before I really start building them all out. So there we go. There's the shift register on there. We've got our current limiting resistors coming to all of it. And so yeah. And as you might notice, I simplified the breadboard quite a bit. So now we can put a screen in here and the other side in there and they should work. There we go. And look, it works. <laughs> Pretty happy with the turnout. Now we just need to time lapse getting the rest of these built up. I will say this one, these ones with the uh, little blue tie over there, which is the clear. I tied clear to high because I don't need to clear them. I'm just gonna shift in. Like if I want it off, then I'll shift in zeros. I don't need to clear the registers, but anyways. This is a blue one, and then we have the red one, which is uh, the other side. So, I will say the blue mapped out quite a bit easier, and then the red was a little bit more of an afterthought. So, I'm not sure how easy it is going to be to finish these up. But, these ones are pretty easy, you know? Resistors all have their own little space to go to, and it's uh, not too bad. I think now it's back to time lapse, and let's actually finish these out. <laughs> We got this. Okay, so I got half of them done, you know, the one side, the easier side, and I wanted it to take an hour, it took two, and it was half. So, doing these is taking four times longer than I thought. But, I don't want to leave the flux on there, so we are going to wash these for tonight, and uh, we'll come back maybe tomorrow.
hopefully you guys can see this, but there's some like weird... Maybe it started eating it? I don't know. See that? I don't know what that is. Maybe I left them in here too long. Well, the modules are all done and washed. And again, so we have like front facing modules and back facing modules. And they both turned out pretty decent. We'll just call these the front facing ones. These are the ones that I did first. So like the routing is a bit easier with the hard lines. And then when I came back in with the uh, jacketed wire, I, it was pretty decent. And then the back facing ones are the ones that I did second where again, these on the bottom are flipped. And so the hard lines had to kind of come around. And then as I went through it, I got better and better at like wiring up the LEDs on the shift registers. And something with these is that I think I ran out of the other solder and I started having to use uh, some different, well, this solder that I got. And it started leaving behind a bunch of residue after the wash. So I think it's just the flux that's in that and that didn't do too well, but Anyway, so yeah, we have both and then I reset up, I set up my breadboard situation so that way I could test um, front and back in one and then uh, just have it so that way it'll just count up as you do it. And then the back side is the same thing. Anyways, so just a fun little example. Uh, the next problem to solve that I'm still thinking about is I want to build them into these little modules and these modules will sit on top of the finish line. So yeah, these modules will be sitting on top of the finish lines and then the cars are going to go through the bottom. And we have basically two options. We have a wider bottom or a skinnier bottom. And when I place them on the finish lines here, I'm just not sure if, I mean, the wider one might be a bit better, but the skinnier one I could maybe, it's mainly about mounting them because there's gonna, I'm gonna have it wired here on the bottom and VHB isn't gonna really hold them down that well. So I was thinking maybe screws through here. So I'd have to do the skinny ones with screws through here, but then the bottom isn't gonna have as much support on there and it's gonna be tighter, I don't know. And this guy is gonna be wider, but, so after deliberating with that, I think what I'm gonna do is this. I might honestly just use zip ties, wider boards with the zip ties, and that should hold them on there better. So we have that part done. Uh, the next thing, so I'm gonna use an Arduino Nano Every, and I think I'm gonna use a board like this. I might actually use the wider board like this, and then we're gonna mount it onto there and then have the pull-up resistors for the sensors on the bottom and then it's gonna populate out down here. But what I've just been doing today is trying to figure out this. So these are all the IR emitters down here in the bottom in this trough. And they're currently being powered on three volts, basically. And at three volts, this whole system takes half an amp, essentially, like 450 milliamps. And that's fine and dandy, but the thing is, is the displays need to run on 12 volts. So I wanna just convert this whole system into 12 volts. Plug in 12 volts, everything works. And that's where I run into issues. I thought maybe I could just convert these by putting in a resistor or something to 12 volts, but trying to limit half an amp at 12 volts, it, the wattage takes quite a bit. So I want to convert this into one plug and that leaves me with a bunch of different options and nothing I have really works, but the option that I think finally will work is with this Arduino Nano Every. So you can have up to 21 volts coming in. I'm gonna be running it on 12. And then there's two voltage rails on here. There is a five volt rail and a 3.3 volt rail. And each of those rails have a pin that you can use some power if you wanted to power some things from there. I looked up the documentation, the 3.3 volt rail can have 550 milliamps to whatever the heck I want. The five volt rail can have 950. So this current system on three volts is right about 550 milliamps, which means if I powered it off the three volts, the LDO on here would just be cooking and probably fail. But the five volt rail can do 950 amps. So if I 
convert this to still be doing about half an amp, then the five volt rail from the regulator on here should be able to easily power 500 milliamps. <laughs> we want to convert this not to 12 volts, but maybe five volts now, so we can do it off of the voltage rail on the Nano. In converting this to five volts, I have a few options. I can either over here, put in one big resistor to limit the whole system. I can pull out their resistor and put in a new value, or I could maybe add in a value there. And just to give you a quick overview, so currently in their system, we have three volts. Uh, we have a resistor and a diode, and the diode needs 1.2 volts, which means the resistor sees about 1.8 volts of a drop across it. And at 62.5 milliamps, that means that resistor is like 33 ohms, which puts their whole system per resistor at 112.5 milliwatts. That's like a little over a tenth of a watt. So they probably have like quarter watt, maybe half watt resistors down in there. And looking through all my options, I think the only viable one is again, five volt rail, and then we're gonna swap out the resistor, their resistor, with one of these. So these are quarter watt, which means they can do 250 milliwatts of heat dissipation on there. And if we put in 68 ohms, now at five volts, we'll have 3.8 volts seen across that resistor, which puts our current at 500, or 50, 55 milliamps, which puts our whole new system, these resistors will be dissipating 212 watts, which is under 250 milliwatts. We'll be cutting down the current a little bit. The resistors are gonna be dissipating mm, almost twice as much heat, but they should be just fine. And what it means we gotta do is each one of these resistors on each of these LEDs, I need to pull out the chip resistor and then put in one of these old school through hole resistors. And then from there, we can just grab the end here and plug it onto the five volt rail here. And then everything should be fine. Nothing should blow up <laughs> and it should just run when we plug in 12 volts into this whole system. So hopefully that makes sense. We've got 950 milliamps. We're gonna be doing right about 500, well, 400 milliamps or so through this. So this isn't gonna get hot. These resistors are gonna get a little hot, but they are rated for it and it should be good. So now we just gotta get to uh, trying to desolder down in there without burning too much wood. <laughs> so let's get to it. So after thinking about it, um, I didn't want to use eight of these, but these are 33 ohms. So if I just put them in series, then there we go. We got 66 ohms here and 68 ohms through here. So we're gonna do, each lane has two LEDs. So we'll do one LED with the chips, one LED with the through hole resistors. So yeah, we just gotta get them in there now that I got them pulled apart. Let's try it, and we are seeing just about 440. There we are, 443 amps, sorry, 443 milliamps. And you guys can maybe see them on. That is them on, off, on, off. This is now a five volt system. I only uh, burned the wood a tiny bit. Okay, so I think the next step, for whatever reason, I'm struggling to take the next step. And I think what I need to do is just start trying to get these displays built up, <clears throat> meaning like back to back on their own board. So we're gonna solder the one side and go from there.
All right, well, this is where we are sitting right now. I got the displays zip tied up onto here and I started working on the Arduino board. So I did get all the wires soldered in here on the Arduino board. I just ran them underneath there and then I have this for the sensors underneath. Each one has a ground and then the sensor coming back. And I also got my current program working. It's just counting up on each of those as you can see. Um, and they're double sided so the back side's working too. But as you can notice right here this resistor or this this segment is not is not lighting up like it should so it looks weird and after looking at it it is right down in here let's see if i can point without shortening anything out so right down in there the resistor that's closest to us on the bottom is not connected i guess i didn't fully solder that down oh yeah and that's the other thing i have 12 volts you can put 12 volts in there or 12 volts in here. But now I've got to try to figure out um, how to get in there. And I think what I'm gonna do is just, I like moved these wires over and just try to come in and ever so slightly touch the bottom side there. It'll be tight, but hopefully I don't burn anything. And then, and then we'll be good. It should be running. Just gotta terminate these wires here and finish the programming and everything should work. <laughs> oh man, it's been a while, but let's get to it. Okay, so we have a path of destruction. <laughs> I pulled out the display this is getting a bit beat up. This board is kind of getting a bit beat up too, but ultimately, in the end of the day, what happened is that um, down here, between the power, the common power, and the bottom side of that segment that was not lighting up, there's now 50 ohms. And everywhere else, there is, or it's like infinite, you know, there's no current flowing. And so, yeah, that pin, I'm, I killed that pin. Oh, uh, so I killed this segment from touching something which doesn't make sense. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I guess what I probably did was uh, touch the high side. So we had 12 volts coming in and I probably touched the low side to ground and then just like burnt up all the LEDs on there. And so now they're just like kind of shorted out. So I'm uh, going to have to go get a new display. But luckily, I think we can still use this board. Um, so I'll order some new displays. We can put that in, put it together, and then everything should be working. <laughs> oh, man. I got my startup sequence done and I honestly really like it. So here, let me show you. Yeah, maybe a little extra, but I definitely think that's pretty good. That looks pretty good. And it should look the exact same on the back side. Yeah. I figured that going over the code would probably help quite a few of you, but if you don't like it, then here's a timestamp on the screen and you can go to after this. But just to quickly go over this, we have all of these defines up here, and this is just so that I can reference things a bit easier and make the code a bit nicer to read. And then I have some defines that you can actually change how it operates a bit. So you can change some of the timings in there. 
Um, and then I have these bitmaps, which these are what you shift into the shift registers to get the displays to actually display what you want. So I just have standard numbers and then some fun things for the different sequences for like the startup and the wait. Then these are like the pin numbers. And this is where I actually struggled a bit because when I programmed for my Arduino Nano, it worked out great. I could just say like D2 and D5 and that kind of a thing. These digital pins that are in the Arduino space. But as I went to the Nano every, like none, nothing was working. And after a bunch of digging around and some trial and error, I figured out that these pin numbers actually worked out. Um, yeah, so just pin one through pin 13. And, and this is honestly just kind of hard information to find. I had to dig through like the, the header files and stuff that came with it. But anyways, we got that dealt with and that's good. Then we just have some of our globals in there and then two main functions for actually showing, um, printing out stuff to the displays. Basically one that just updates it. Uh, so you can update displays in two ways where you can either like change the global variable, whoops, and then hit update or call the update function or you can call this function and pass it all the dis like the bitmaps in the displays that you want to update to. And then the update function, again, we have to update all of the displays because the clock is connected between all of them. So if you're going to shift something into one of them, you got to shift something into all of them. So that's why you have to update everything at the same time. But then we get into the setup, and this is pretty simple. We just configure all the pins like we want and the outputs, and then we have our fun little light show in the beginning, our, our startup sequence, as I call it. And after that, we have our startup sensor check, because I realized that, like, because the light hoop has to be over the sensors to give enough light to, to activate the sensors, I need to have some form of check to make sure that whoever's trying to use it kind of can use it like, okay, it's calibrated. Every sensor has enough light. So I just have a little thing. So that way, if, if you start up and all the sensors have enough light already, then the time during the light show will count towards, you know, having everything good for the sensor check time. And then from there, we just set up, we configure everything for a start of a race. And then this is also another point that I kind of had to struggle a bit because I looked up a bunch of tutorials for trying to do interrupts on pin changes and they're all great, but they all did not work for the Nano every. And so I had to actually start going into more of like what I do for my job of like firmware, firmware and start digging through the data sheets and looking at what processor I have and then I basically just referenced these registers directly in order to to configure the processor to have the interrupts work like I want. But overall, it's it, decently simple. Other than now, I realized that how I had the pins set up, two of them are on port E and two of them are on port B. So we have we're gonna have two different interrupt service routines for those. But that's all good and dandy. And now we get into the main loop where essentially two things will happen. Either we're waiting for someone to finish and we're doing our fun little light show here, or someone has finished and we update what position on the displays and you can reset for a new race using the gate input right now. And then as for my interrupts for the pin change, essentially what just happens is that if someone crosses the finish line and they haven't been awarded a finish position, then there's this there's this global variable that holds what position is available. So if no one's crossed, first is up for grabs. And if lane four comes across and hasn't been awarded a position, then they get first. And then we increment it. So now second position is available. So then like lane two can come in and grab second position. Then I'm also just checking for like ties. So this is where if any tie happens, the people who had the tie, they all get awarded the same position. And then whoever's next is like the position coming after it naturally. So like if two people tie for first, the next person to cross will get third. So I think that's how typically it's done, but it seems to work out pretty well. And again, I think the amount of time it takes to run this code for like an interrupt to happen, I'm pretty sure it's down to like microseconds that you'd have to have a tie actually be a tie. So I don't think you're ever really going to get this, but it should still handle it pretty well.
I guess some other important information is that I am using Sublime Text to do all of this. And I am using Arduino CLI, I think is what it's called for the packages, which just allows me to say what path for all the libraries, what board I'm using, which this also took a bit of digging for the Arduino Nano every, I had to use board manager to install the package. And then it's Mega AVR and Nona 4809. And then the COM port. If you clone the Git repository, all of this should be in there. And if you set up your Sublime Text with that plugin, then you should just be able to hit Control B and it'll compile everything and program it for you, which I have found to be pretty nice. And Sublime is pretty easy to start coding in. So I love it. And that's the basis of all the code. Hopefully that makes sense. We have finally finished it and holy smokes it took a bit more time than I wanted but we got it done and it's freaking awesome I, I love it so much so let me take you some through some of the features we have so I can plug in 12 volts from that side or this side on this board and then we have a reset button here but you could also push the reset button on the nano itself and we have all of our displays and then down here we have connection to the sensors on the bottom and you can disconnect the gate sensor and this is like or a gate switch and that's where like at the top when you drop the gate that switch will open up so at the beginning we have our fun little light show and then this is like the center sensor calibration so you can see as i move it it'll tell you what sensors have enough light or do not have enough light and then when they get enough light there's this period where it's like okay now we're good and now we are in a race and so whoever crosses will finish <laughs> and then there's two ways to reset it you can either use the gate switch right now for a new race or you can just reset the whole system and so it should be pretty simple plug it in plug in the sensors you should be good to go and then you can have fun races so this project is crossed off the list it is done and ready to go it was definitely a bit more involved than some of our some of my other projects and we have some more involved projects in the future that'll come but for now this one's done i think we're ready to move on to the next one because i have more fun stuff coming and i'm excited for it so i hope you guys hit the subscribe button and come for the next project and uh if you want to know more information about this we do have the github repository link we should have more resources down in the description if you want to do something like this yourself. If you have any comments, put them down below. But until then, we'll see you guys on the next project. Bye.